living world here in in a biodiversity there are 10 million species on the planet will be there in a tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn are rich in the diversity of plants and animals this is called mega diversity the region of mega diversity on the basis of their similarity differences these living organisms are arranged into different groups and subgroups which is termed as a classification of organism with hierarchy of classification the classification is done by naming the subgroups at various level as given below in the for the plants and animals it is the kingdoms the hierarchy of classification will be different for animals we call it as a phylum and for the plants we call it as a divisions next class order family genus and the species animals that belongings to the same genus or a species share the most similarities hence these similarities increases when we go down to the hierarchy of classification next coming to classification of living organisms according to the similarities and uh, functions uh, these living organisms are classified into so many scientists uh, in that first one carolus linnaeus uh, he proposed the two kingdoms of classification here so in this king, uh, kingdom of classification based on the nutrition and mobility the living organisms were classified into kingdom plantae and the kingdom animalia here the kingdom plantae it undergoes all the plants uh, and the kingdom animalia includes all the animals category so he fails to explain the prokaryotes and eukaryotic unicellular and multicellular organisms comes under which category for this reason this uh, two kingdom of classification got abolished and here they have said about the prokaryotes and eukaryotes prokaryotes means it is the uh, it is this type of a cell where the nucleus will be not externally bounded by a nuclear membrane and in the eukaryotes it is the cell having a uh, true nucleus that's what eukaryote means the concept unicellular and multicellular means it is a type of a cell where single cell will be present means unicellular and more than one cell it will be there no that will call it as a multicellular organism so so these are comes under a which group that did not explain the properly in the two kingdoms of classification next coming to the three kingdoms of classification here what happens in the three kingdom classification in the year in 1894 ernest hackel he divided organisms in the environment into three different categories based on their characteristics and functions so those are all kingdom animalia kingdom plantae kingdom protista kingdom animalia it includes all the animals and kingdom plantae includes all the plants and kingdom protista includes true nucleus having cell that is eukaryotes later this kingdom of classification is also got abolished so so because of this finally the five kingdoms of classification came into existence according to the scientist robert whitaker in the year 1977 he introduced the concept of five kingdom classification this four kingdom of classification is given by Herbert F Copeland in the year 1938 the kingdom of classifications are as follows first one is kingdom monera second kingdom protista third kingdom metaphyta fourth kingdom metazoa here coming to the kingdom monera they are prokaryotic organisms prokaryotic means the organisms having a cell that cell is not externally bounded with the membrane that is we call it as absence of membrane bound organelles and kingdom protista means they comes under primitive eukaryotic plants primitive means it is in a primitive stage which that means the eukaryotic plants eukaryotic means having a true nucleus so true nucleus having a primitive stage of plants comes under the category called kingdom protista next kingdom metaphyta these organisms are advanced eukaryotic plants advanced means this is evolved from the protista that may we call it as a advanced one so kingdom metaphyta in this type of a kingdom of classification it includes all the eukaryotic plants advanced eukaryotic plants coming to the fourth one kingdom metazoa these are advanced eukaryotic animals so advanced eukaryotic animals will be there in the kingdom metazoa so we will discuss each of the kingdom monera protista metaphyta and metazoa 
in the fourth kingdoms of classification but coming to the next another one classification we call it as a five kingdoms of classification these five kingdoms of classification was given by robert h whitaker or R. H. Whitaker in the year 1959 proposed this five kingdoms of classification based on the cell structure, thallus, organization, mode of nutrition and reproduction and phylogenic characteristics. Depending upon all these characteristics, the five kingdoms of classification is divided into five major kingdoms that is kingdom Monera, kingdom Protista, kingdom Mycota, kingdom Metaphyta, kingdom Metazoa. Here, the kingdom mycota is also called as fungi, kingdom metaphyta is also called as plantae and the kingdom metazoa is called, also called as animalia. So here, coming to the first kingdom of classification, that is what we call it as a kingdom monera. Detailed information we will discuss about in this concept. So kingdom monera means it includes only prokaryotic individual prokaryotic means that i have already said about the prokaryotic means membrane bound organelles will be absent in a cell so it includes prokaryotic individual cell wall is made up of a peptidoglycans but not the cellulose in the plants the cell wall is made up of a cellulose but in the kingdom monera it is made up of a peptidoglycans these kingdom monera having 70s types of ribosomes and reproduction is also occur in this kingdom monera that is by binary fission. So kingdom monera is again subclassified into two types that is archaebacteria and eubacteria. So archaebacteria, eubacteria also comes under this kingdom monera. Here the examples for this kingdom monera is bacteria, mycoplasma, archaebacteria and eubacteria. So, coming to the bacteria, detailed study about a bacteria. Here, bacteria having a different types based on their shape. This is the structure of the bacteria and this one is the based on the shape. They have classified this bacteria into cocci, bacillus, spiro, uh, spirochetes, spirilla and vibrios. Cocci means the bacteria shape will be in a round shape. Bacillus means it is in a rod shape. These two comes under spiral shaped bacteria and this vibrios comes under the uh, comma shaped bacteria it is. So this is about the shape. According to the shape the bacteria are classified into five types. So coming to the bacterial types based on their nutrition how based on their nutrition the bacterial types also there first one is autotrophic bacteria autotrophic bacteria means synthesize their own food material so these are the bacteria which synthesize their own food material next second one is chemo autotrophic bacteria the name itself suggesting chemo autotrophic that means it gets energy from the oxidation of inorganic substances to synthesize their own food. For example, for this is nitrifying bacteria that is nitrosomonas and nitrobacter. Second one is a chromatinum. Chromatinum is also called as purple sulfur bacteria. One marks question very important it is. So coming to next, uh, next type of bacteria that is photoautotrophic bacteria. Photo means light autotrophic means prepare their own food so here using of light energy to synthesize their own food these bacteria will going to be these bacteria will going to produce the food example chlorobium this chlorobium is also called as a green sulfur bacteria so coming to the next category that is heteroautotrophic bacteria that means it obtains their food from the other organisms so coming to the next fifth category of this bacteria is parasitic bacteria. Parasitic means nothing but obtain food from other living organisms. Example, Vibrio, Vibrio cholerae, Salmonella pneumonia. Oh, these are all the parasitic bacteria. Coming to the next one that is saprophytic bacteria. Saprophytic bacteria obtains their food from the dead and decaying matter. For example, Lactobacillus acetyl acetobacter next last type is symbiotic bacteria symbiotic means obtains food from mutually beneficially association 
with other organisms so for example rhizobium e coli these are comes under symbiotic type of bacteria so this is about the types of bacteria based on their nutrition next coming to bacteria types based on their reproduction so here the bacteria will reproduce by asexual and sexual type of reproduction here you can see the picture how the binary fission will be occurring and the spore formation will be occurring in this type of a bacteria so here bacterial type based on the reproduction it is classified into sexually and asexually in asexually the bacteria will reproduce by binary fission and spore formation binary fission means a formation of two daughter bacteria here one bacteria will form into a two daughter bacteria by the cell division of fully grown bacterium when this bacterium will fully grown no it will divides itself and forms two identical daughter cells this is about the binary fission and spore formation means when unfavorable condition will be there no in that time the thick walled highly dehydrated and resistant spores called endospores formation occurs and after that when it will get a Uh, favorable condition environmental condition this will rupture the cell wall will going to be rupture and produce a new individuals so this is the type of another type of a reproduction occur in a bacteria next coming to bacterial types based on their reproduction in that reproduction by sexual sexual type of reproduction here the bacteria will reproduce in three types a conjugation transformation and transduction here in the conjugation you can observe it is a passage of a genes from one bacterium to the another here one bacterium will be going to transfer the gene from another bacterium through a conjugation tube this tube we call it as a conjugation tube so this is the conjugation type of reproduction and here transformation it is the incorporation of genes to nucleoid of a bacterium by itself directly from one bacterium to another so here you can observe the complete bacterium it will transfer the gene from one bacterium to another bacterium another bacterium's nucleoid a nucleoid means it is a primitive nucleus we can call it as a primitive nucleus last concept in this is a transduction this is nothing but same as it is in the transformation but here the transfer of gene occur from one bacterium to another with the help of a virus with the help of virus it will going to transfer the gene these are the three types of a reproductive uh, reproduction in um, bacteria and the last concept is disease caused by the bacteria disease caused by bacteria in humans the cholera disease will be caused by vibrio cholerae typhoid disease is caused by salmonella typhi in plants pneumonia disease is caused by streptococcus pneumoniae and citrus canker disease caused by xanthomonas citri so these are the diseases that caused by the bacteria next another example for a kingdom monera is mycoplasma bacteria and mycoplasma so far we have learnt about the bacteria now coming to mycoplasma this uh, mycoplasma is having a cell wall less prokaryotes in prokaryotes the nuclear will not be bounded with the nuclear membrane along with that cell wall will also be absent in the mycoplasma here the mycoplasma is the smallest living cell one marks they are going to ask for, for hstr it is very important that is smallest living cell example mycoplasma which ranges from 0.1 micrometer to 0.3 micrometer and another thing is they cause pleuropneumonia in animals and witches in plants what is the main disease that caused by the mycoplasma means in witches in plants it called as a witches and in the animals it is called as a pleuropneumonia kingdom protista it includes single celled eukaryotes that eukaryotes you have already known that is nucleus having a true nucleus so the cell wall is covered by cell wall in kingdom protista the cell wall is covered by cell wall either pellicle or cuticle or shell so locomotory structure by pseudopodia flagella cilia so here in the protista 
Pseudopodia means false feet. Uh, flagella and cilia. These are the structures which helps in the locomotion in kingdom protista. Reproduction asexually by fission. So you have already learnt about the fission. Uh, in amoeba you have learnt no uh, amoeba having a two types of fission. So binary fission and the multiple fission. So like that uh, another one type is uh, budding which uh, produce the bud in the maturation time. Next uh, sporulation which produces spores and uh, as a uh, these are about the asexual type of reproduction occur in the protista. Now sexual type by gamete formation, male and female gametes. So next last point in this concept is it includes different forms of individuals. Or oh, different forms of individuals you can get in that first uh, subclass is cryosophytes. Cryosophytes it is having a types cryosophytes example diatoms and desmids so these diatoms and desmids are uh, commonly called as golden algae and another type is dinoflagellates dinoflagellate example pyrodia, pyrodinum peridinum two examples i have given here euglenoids consisting of euglena as an example slime molds consisting of physarum and fuligo Next, in the protozoans, it is also comes under the kingdom protista only. So, plasmodium, paramecium, amoeba, everything will comes under protozoans. So, this is about the kingdom protista. Coming to the next kingdom, kingdom mycota or fungi. So, here the branch of science which deals with the study of fungi is called as mycology. The father of mycology is P. A. Mitchell. Here T is silent in this. So P. A. Mitchell it is. So characteristics are as follows. First one, they prefer to grow in warm and humid places. Prefer to grow in the warm and humid places. And fungi are non-chlorophyllous because it depend on the other for food and absence of a chloroplast in it. Heterotrophic eukaryotes. So having a true nucleus. These are unicellular or filamentous in nature. So these uh, mycota or fungi are unicellular and filamentous in nature. Cell wall is made up of chitin and polysaccharides. As you have learnt in kingdom protista, the cell wall is made up of pellicle or cuticle or cell wall or shell. Here in the kingdom mycota or fungi, it is made up of chitin and the polysaccharides. So here the fungi is also classified into following types. First one is phycomycetes. Though uh, these phycomycetes are commonly called as algal fungi. Example for that is Rhizopus albigo. Second one ascomycetes. Ascomycetes is commonly called as sac fungi. Uh, example for this is yeast aspergillus. Basidiomycetes. So basidiomycetes are commonly called as club fungi. Example for this is agaricus and paxinia. Common name for paxinia is rusty fungi. Deuteromycetes. Deuteromycetes are commonly called as imperfect fungi. Imperfect fungi. Example for that is fusarium and horned trichoderma. It is a, one of the largest group of kingdom metaphyta. Here the kingdom metaphyta having a eukaryotic nothing but true nucleus chlorophyllous that means the plants having a chloroplast pigment in it which synth helps in the synthesis of food containing organisms that is example plants all the plants will come under the category called kingdom plantae or metaphyta here the cell wall is made up of cellulose in the uh, Kingdom plantae or metaphyta, the cell wall is made up of cellulose and life exhibits alternation of generation. That is alternation of generation means diploid sporophytic and haplo, haploid gametophytic phase. Here in the uh, in this type of uh, kingdom plantae, the life exhibits alternation of generation, the sporophytic and gametophytic. In sporophytic, the plant will going to produce spores. In the gametophytic, it will produce gametes. So here, next point is few are heterotrophic. Some 
plants will be heterotrophic in nature for example insectivorous plants bladder wort venus fly trap etc all the insectivorous uh, plants will comes under the heterotrophic plants because that plant kingdom is subclassified into the classes thallophyta bryophyta pteridophyta gymnosperms and angiosperms now the detailed information about thallophytes bryophytes pteridophytes gymnosperms and angiosperms with thallophyta means example algae it is the branch of science which deals with the study of algae is called as phycology so this phycology means study of algae these are thallophytes thallophytes nothing but flat plant body we can call it as a thalloid the structure of the plant will be flat plant body and chlorophyllous chlorophyllous means here chloroplast will be present in that autotrophic means helps in the synthesis of food or prepare their own food and aquatic forms these algae are most of the algae are aquatic in nature they exhibit uh, exhibit in fresh water marine and soil wood etc another important very important question i want to ask it for the hstr exam that is uh, about the agar so here the agar is uh, obtained from a red algae called gelidium and a gracilaria gracilaria and gelidium with the help of these two algae it is a type of red algae remember that one so it is a type of red algae which used in the preparation of jelly ice creams as well as a cultural medium as well as it is a um, used in the preparation of agar so very important question here i have uh, shown you about the this one is the gelidium red algae and this one is a, another red algae called gracilaria so remember the diagram and remember the examples very important for hstr exam algae are divided into three main classes chlorophyce phyophyce and rhodophyce here i have shown the picture about chlorophyce chlorophyce is commonly called as green algae example for this spirogyra and spirulina here is that picture of spirogyra i think you have observed in the fresh water forms and here another type is phyophyce commonly called as brown algae so example for this brown algae is ectocarpus and sargassum so you can observe the picture i have showed here in the slides so sargassum and another third type of algae is rhodophyce rhodophyce is commonly called as a red algae example for this rhodophyce is polysiphonia batrachospermum and gelidium so in the previous class i have showed the picture about the gelidium and gracilaria that one also comes under the red algae so this is about algae and their types so next uh, class is bryophytes so in kingdom plant there are mainly two types uh, five types one is algae that is thallophyta second one is bryophyta so here the bryophyta is commonly called as amphibians of a plant kingdom and it present in the both moist as well, moist land as well as in the water moist areas that's why this name is called as a bryophyta amphibians of plant kingdom very important it is bryophytes are non vascular cryptogams with embryo stage non vascular cryptogams here non vascular means there is no uh, specialized tissue for conduction of uh, water and minerals and food for the plant cryptogams means these are the uh, plant which is uh, the reproductive organ will be exposed to the environment and it is not hidden so these we call it as a cryptogams with embryo stage the another point is the plant body is a haploid gametophyte which is dominant phase in the life cycle of bryophyte here plant body is haploid occurs vegetatively by fragmentation or gamete formation and sexually by gametes here fragmentation means accidentally or any environmental uh, issues these bryophytes will going to be divide into several fragments each fragments will develop into a new plant body another one is gamete gamete means they are in the favorable condition they are going to produce very uh, normally when uh, the unfavorable condition will be there no in that time what happens the uh, 
bryophytes will going to form a gamma that is a, a couple a round like a structure we call it as a gamma or gemmules and sexually by gametes it is another type of uh, class pteridophyta so this pteridophyta is a commonly called as vascular cryptogams first terrestrial vascular cryptogams so because of the specialized tissue will be present in this group of pteridophytes because conduction of water and minerals will occur in this cryptogams cryptogams means the reproductive part does not hidden in the fruit they found in cool damp shady places and on soil tree trunk etc the plant body is dominant sporophyte which is differentiated into roots stem and leaves coming to the classification of pteridophytes there are mainly four types psilopsida lycopsida spinopsida pteropsida psilopsida example psilotum lycopsida example lycopodium and selaginella spinopsida example is equisetum commonly called as horse tail pteropsida example teris another one is adiantum here you can observe the picture of a Silotum, Lycopodium, Adiantum, and Equisetum. So this is about the uh, kingdom plantae in that third subclass is Pteridophyta. Pteridophyta. Coming to another one uh, type is a fourth one that is Gymnosperms. Gymnosperms are the naked seed bearing plants. Naked seed bearing bearing plants. Gymno is a uh, Gymnosperm word is come from a Greek word it is a gymno means a naked seed or seed is a, does not covered with a seed coat. The tallest tree species is a sequoia commonly called as redwood tree. The plant may be shrub or trees and rarely climbers. The climber uh, tree we call it as a natum. The root or taproot in plants uh, are associated with fungus to form mycorrhizae. That means the roots are taproot system that will be present in the gymnosperms in plants are associated with the fungus to form mycorrhizae and in cycas nitrogen fixation will be there on the roots of the cycas. For example, the roots of the cycas is in a coralide root. In inside that coralide root, you are going to get a blue green algae that is cyanobacteria, which that is blue green algae it is that is present inside the uh, coralide root. Uh, the coralite root will be present in, uh, in the cycas plant uh, which helps in the fixation of nitrogen from atmosphere to the soil. This is about the gymnosperms and the types of gymnosperms are uh, Cycopsida, Coniferopsida, Neatopsida. Cycopsida example cycas, Coniferopsida is example pinus, Neatopsida is uh, example Neatum. Here I have shown the pictures. These uh, gymnosperms are uh, specially used for the decorative purpose. In front of the house and the gardens, they are going to use these, these types of gymnosperms. Here, Neatum is the example for climber. So, this is about the class gymnosperm in the, in the kingdom plantae. Coming to the another type of uh, class pteridophyta. So, this Pteridophyta is commonly called as vascular cryptogams. First terrestrial vascular cryptogams. So because of the specialized tissue will be present in this group of pteridophytes because conduction of water and minerals will occur in this cryptogams. Cryptogams means the reproductive part does not hidden in the fruit. They found in cool, damp, shady places and on soil, tree trunk, etc. The plant body is dominant sporophyte which is differentiated into roots, stem and leaves. Coming to the classification of pteridophytes, there are mainly four types. Psilopsida, Lycopsida, Spinopsida, Pteropsida. Psilopsida, example Psilotum. Lycopsida, example Lycopodium and Selaginella. Spinopsida example is equisetum, commonly called as horse tail. Pteropsida example teres, another one is adiantum. Here you can observe the picture of a Psilotum, Lycopodium, Adiantum and equisetum. 
so this is about the uh, kingdom plantae in that third subclass is pteridophyta pteridophyta coming to another one uh, type is a uh, fourth one that is gymnosperms gymnosperms are the naked seed bearing plants naked seed bearing bearing plants gymno is a uh, uh, gymnosperm word is come from a greek word it is a uh, gymno means uh, naked seed uh, or seed is the uh, does not covered with the seed coat the tallest tree species is a uh, sequoia commonly called as redwood tree the plant may be shrub or trees and rarely climbers the climber uh, tree we call it as a netum um, the root are tap root in plants uh, are associated with fungus to form mycorrhiza that means uh, the roots are tap root system that will be present in the gymnosperms in plants are associated with the fungus to form mycorrhiza and in cycas nitrogen fixation will be there on the roots of the cycas for example the roots of the cycas is in a coralloid root in inside that coralloid root you are going to get a blue green algae that is cyanobacteria which helps in the which helps in the fixation of yes the roots are tap root system in plants are associated with the fungus to form mycorrhiza and in cycas nitrogen fixation will also be occur with the help of a bacteria uh, cyanobacteria that is blue green algae it is uh, that is present inside the uh, coralloid root uh, the coralloid root will be present in, uh, in the cycas plant uh, which helps in the fixation of nitrogen from atmosphere to the soil this is about the gymnosperms and the types of gymnosperms are uh, cycopsida coniferopsida netopsida Cycopsida example cycas, coniferopsida is example pinus, neatopsida is uh, example neatum. Here I have shown the pictures. These uh, gymnosperms are uh, specially used for the decorative purpose. In front of the house uh, and the gardens, uh, they are going to use these, these types of uh, gymnosperms. Here neatum is the example for climber. So this is about the class gymnosperm in the in the kingdom plantae last concept of a kingdom plantae or kingdom metaphyta is angiosperm last concept in that kingdom plantae that is angiosperm commonly called as flowering plants seed is externally covered by seed coat in this kingdom plantae the different systems of classifications are in practice uh, to understand the angiosperm some of the systems of classifications are as follows uh, in that first one is artificial system of classification so this is very important they are going to ask for hstr exams uh, very important learn the angiosperms properly artificial system of classification this artificial system of classification is given by skimper and eacher in the year 1879 it is based on the superficial characters like habitat habit and morphological vegetative characters like color number and shape of the leaves after this classification they didn't uh, classify the plants properly in the group that's why later corollus linnaeus used androsium that is a male reproductive organ in the plant that helps in the uh, by using this structure he classified the angiosperms into two types that is monocot and a dicot that we will discuss about later so second system of classification is natural system of classification this natural system of classification is given by bentham and hooker in the year 1883 very important in which year bentham and hooker classified which system of classification they have classified they are going to ask natural system of classification bentham and hooker in the year 1883 based on the external features they have classified the plants in those in uh, external features and internal features uh, embryology embryology means a study of embryos uh, cytology uh, study of tissues uh, and a cell about the cell and the functioning of the cell phytochemistry about the chemicals that present in the plant about that uh, they have classified the natural system of classification another 
is phylogenetic system of classification. This system of classification is given by Engler and Prantel in the year 1892. It is based on evolutionary relationship among organisms. Evolutionary relationship. When compared to your ancestral age, we are evaluating every day, day by day. So, evolutionary relation among the organism, they have classified phylogenetic system of classification given by Engler and Prantel in the year 1892. Next, another is numerical taxonomy. Numerical taxonomy was given by Adamson in the year 1763. It is based on numbers and code assigned to each observer observable characters and then data is processed in computer for classification of organisms. So remember that one numerical taxonomy is given by Adamson in the year 1763. Another one is cytotaxonomy. This was given by Levin et al. Levin et al means there are so many scientists they have used to uh, classify the plants uh, according uh, to that uh, we can't able to get, uh, write all the names no. That's why they have given it as a et al. We are writing it as a et al. It is a one of the rule in the writing nomenclature of plants. Here, Levon et al. In the year 1964, he, he given the name cytotaxonomy. It is based on the cytological details like chromosomes, number, structure, behavior for classification of the organisms. Chromosome, number, structure of that chromosome and behavior for example, because of all these characters, he classified the organisms in a group called cytotaxonomy. Another one last uh, classification is chemotaxonomy. It is given by Kenyon. Kenyon et al. in the year 1972. It is based on chemical constituent and secondary metabolites of organisms. Chemical constituent that means whatever the chemicals that are present in the plant body they have based on that chemicals along with the secondary metabolites of organisms they have used for their classifying the anim, I mean plants. So, this is about the angiosperms and classification. Last concept in this is monocots and dicots. That is the two types we can observe in the monocots and dicots in the angiosperm. Monocot means having single cotyledon. The plant which is having a single cotyledon, we call it as a monocot. And the plant which is having a two cot, uh, cotyledon, we call it as a dicot plant. Example for this monocot is maize, onion, wheat, grass, everything. Dicot plant, example, mustard, mango, jackfruit, everything. So, for monocot plant, the root system will be fibrous root system and venation will be parallel venation and cotyledon will be single. In the dicot plant, root will be tap root system you can observe. In the venation, reticulate venation and cotyledon you can get two cotyledons. Kingdom Animalia or Metazoa is a eukaryotic, nothing but a true, having a true nucleus. Heterotrophic, nothing but depends on other for food. Multicellular, having more than one cell. Lack of cell wall. Here, the, in the animal cell, what happens? The cell wall will be absent and it digests their food, the stores and uh, digest the food and stores reserve food as a glycogen or fat. In plants, what it, uh, it will happen means uh, it stored food material will be in the form of starch. But in the animals or metazoans, the stored food material will be in the form of glycogen or fat. Second point, exhibits the locomotion. Locomotion nothing but movement. The animals can move from one place to another place. Sexual reproduction by copulation of female and a male followed by embryological development. Next, higher forms, nothing but in the human beings, shows a sensory and neuromotor mechanism. Sensory and the neuromotor mechanism you can observe in the humans. The needs for classification become important to assign the system position to the newly described species of the classification. So, in this class, we have to discuss about the basis of classification of that kingdom, Animalia or Metazoa. Before going to the classifications, we have to learn about the levels of organizations.
Levels of organization means animals are multicellular, but they includes various levels of organization. Those organizations we call it as a cellular grade organization, tissue grade organization, and organ grade organization. Here, cellular grade of organization example is Porifera. These cellular grade organization means multicellular with loosely aggregation of cells with no tissue formation. Here, group of cells will be there, but there is no tissue will be going to be formed here. This type of aggregation we call it as a cellular grade of organization. Tissue grade means example is cylinderate. All cells group together to form a unit called tissue and these tissues perform similar function. Here what happens all the animal cells will going to be grouped together and forms a tissue. This kind of organization we call it as tissue grade of organization. Organ grade of organization means example from platyhelminthes to chordates. Here, when two or more tissues work together for a specific function, here you can observe the picture properly. Here, one animal cell they have given. After that, group of these animal cells group together and performs a particular function forms a tissue. Here, like this, one kind of a tissue will be there here. Like these only, groups of tissues group together and performs a particular function and forms an organ. Then group of organs combine to form organ system and the complete organ system compare, uh, combines together and forms a one organisms. So this is about the levels of organization in the animals. So coming to the symmetry of a symmetry and body wall. Here symmetry how the animal's body symmetry will be there that you have to learn here. Symmetry means any plane that passes through the center does not divide them into equal halves. Symmetry means in any planes passes through the center. That means if you are cutting one organism in the middle of that central axis, it divides them into equal halves. That we call it as a symmetry. In that, two types of symmetry will be there, radial symmetry and the bilateral symmetry. Radial symmetry means when a section passes through the central axis of the body vertically in any direction, divides the organism into two equal halves. So, where, what happens here? In vertically, the uh, center of the axis, you are going to cut organism. It forms a two equal halves you are going to get. Bilateral symmetry means the body are arranged along the main axis and they can be divided into left identical and right identical halves in only one plane vertically. Bilaterally means in any plane at any vertically at any direction you can cut. But in the bilateral symmetry what happens at one plane you have to cut vertically you are going to get two identical equal halves that is about the bilateral symmetry. Next, diploblastic organization. Diploblastic organization and triploblastic organization also you have to learn. Here, diploblastic organization means the body wall consisting of two layers of cells, outer ectoderm and the inner endoderm. In between these layers lies a non-cellular gelatinous matrix called mesogloia. Understanding? So here the group of cells which forms the outer layer of a organ organization we call it as a ectoderm and inner one endoderm. Here triploblastic means the body is derived from three primary germ layers: outer ectoderm, middle mesoderm, and the inner endoderm. This is about the triploblastic organization. Coming to the classification of kingdom animalia. So kingdom animalia is classified into two types, chordates and the non-chordates. Depending upon the presence of notochord, uh, nothing but a dorsal tubular nerve cord that will be present on the organisms that we call it as a chordates. If it is absent, then we call it as a non-chordates. Chordates are characterized by the presence of notochord, as I said before, uh, a dorsal nerve cord and paired pharyngeal gill slits will be present in the animals. Phylum chordate is divided into four subphyla. Here, the phylum chordates are divided into four subphyla. Those we call it as urochordates or tunicata, cephalochordates and vertebrates, are vertebrates and invertebrates. There are mainly four subphylums you are going to observe here in the kingdom animalia. 
subphyla urochordates and cephalochordates here urochordates and or tunicata or cephalochordates so these two are often referred as a protochordates persisting notochord throughout their lifespan nothing but these two combines together cephalochordates and urochordates or tunicata combines together and forms a prochordates these protochordates what happens in the protochordates the notochords will be present throughout their lifespan next another two types of subphyla uh, are vertebrates and invertebrates here vertebrates means they have backbone an internal skeletal endoskeleton nothing but endoskeleton and muscles will be present in the vertebrates the invertebrates what happens the animals does not possess a backbone or vertebral column so coming to the classification of vertebrates here the vertebrates are classified into five major types uh, i mean nothing but the classes so here the member of subphyla vertebrata possess notochord during embryonic period during the embryonic period the vertebrates having a notochord then the notochord is replaced by a cartilaginous or bony vertebral column yeah, nothing but uh, the backbone of the organism will be replaced uh, the these notochord will be replaced uh, with the cartilaginous or bony vertebral column when the organism enters to adult the subphyla vertebrata is assigned classified into following types that is pisces amphibians reptiles apes and mammals here i have given minimum two to examples for each of the class class coming to the classification of first uh, classification of class uh, pisces they are found in freshwater or marine water these uh, pisces are nothing but the fishes uh, these are pr present in the fresh water or in the marine water body is divided into head trunk and tail here the form of body of the fish will be divided into head the trunk and the tail respiration through either it may be gills uh, and covered by an operculum on each side on each either side of the uh, organisms uh, the gills are covered by a structure called operculum spindle shaped streamlined body will be there for the fishes body is externally covered by scales having two chambered heart one auricle and one ventricle will be there so two chambered heart these pisces are having they are cold blooded animals cold blooded animals nothing but poikilotherms there uh, here what happens body temperature varies to the surrounding environment if the outer environment is that is the water body is cold the body of the animals will going to be change their body temperature to the surrounding environment that's why it is called as a poikilotherms next sexes are separate here the fertilization is usually external mostly oviparous here oviparous and viviparous there are two types you are going to get in the organisms oviparous means so those are the organisms which lay egg viviparous or viviparous we call it as that one which give birth to the egg ones here the fishes comes under the oviparous which lays the egg example for that is marine and freshwater fishes here another one uh, subtypes you are going to get here in the pisces are contractis and the ostrictis so coming to the contractis and ostrictis they have skeleton primarily composed of bone chondrichthys means jawed fish having a cartilaginous skeleton here i have showed the picture about cartilaginous fish and a nothing but chondrichthys and bony fish or osteorichthys here this one is a great white shark it comes under the category called chondrichthys and here here i have showed the picture about ostrichthys uh, rohu this uh, comes under uh, they have the uh, primary skeletal composed of uh, bone coming to the next subclass uh, that is amphibians as you may know that amphibians mean the, means uh, nothing but uh, they present in both the moist as well as in the water or aquatic condition as the name indicates it is from the greek word amphi means dual bios means life or dual life the amphibians are having this is having a cold blooded animals even the fish are also cold blooded animals and the amphibians are also cold blooded animals or nothing but poikilotherms so body temperature changes according to their 
surroundings most have two pairs of a limbs that is hind limb and fore limbs here i have showed the picture you can observe here these are the fore limb and here the two are there no these two are the hind limbs body is divided into head trunk but tail may be present in some amphibians head trunk and tail will be absent in the some uh, amphibians like a salamander you are going to get the tail part also here it uh, respiration is by gills lungs and through skin some uh, will respire through lungs some will uh, respire through gills and some will be the uh, will be respire through skin skin is moist without scale here the amphibian skins are very moist and without scales uh, pisces are two uh, chambered heart they are having these amphibians are having three chambered heart two auricular and one ventricle sexes are separate and fertilization is external they are oviparous here of x example for this amphibians are buffo nothing but toad rana or frog hyla tree frog ichthyophis limbless amphibia for a hstr they are going to ask about the given example for limbless amphibian means ichthyophis you have to write ichthyophis it just uh, like a uh, snake it will be like a uh, snake next after amphibians coming to the next concept that is reptiles the class name is, uh, refers to their creeping and crawling mode of locomotion here these reptiles having a mode of creeping, creeping and crawling snakes and lizards have special characters called ecdysis ecdysis nothing but molting shedding of scales or a old skin they are mostly terrestrial animals and their body is covered by dry and cornified skin or epidermal scales or scutes body is divided into head trunk and tail three chambered heart except crocodile crocodiles having a four chambered heart and they are poikilotherms change their body temperature according to their surrounding environment sexes are separate fertilization is internal example for this is chameleon commonly called as tree lizard hemidactyle nothing but wall lizard kelotis nothing but garden lizard these are the example for the reptiles next coming to the apes or the birds birds are glorified reptiles derived from the reptiles uh, because derived from the reptiles that's why they are called as birds are glorified reptiles archaeopteryx is a example for a reptiles fossil reptiles that showing both bird and reptile character that is archaeopteryx skin is externally covered by feathers most of them can fly most of the flower uh, i mean uh, birds can fly because of the presence of pneumatic bone because uh, pneumatic bone means uh, the bone is hollow and filled with the air that's why it can easily fly from one region to another region except flightless bird they are going to ask ostrich ostrich is an example for a flightless bird sexes are separate here fertilization is internal oviparous fertilization occur internal so oviparous means egg laying birds respiration through lungs as like a humans they respire through lungs four limbs are modified into wings here the wings will be there no this one is the four limbs and these two are the hind limbs this four limbs modified to become a wings for flying four chambered heart and warm blooded birds these organisms are warm blooded they cannot change their body temperature according to the surrounding that's why we call it as a homeotherms here four chambered heart will be there examples columba example pigeon commonly called pigeon pistacula uh, example parrot struthio ostrich coming to the last class of vertebrates are mammalia nothing but all the animals will comes under this category mammalia mammalia are hairy quadrupeds quadri means four legs four uh, quadri means four uh, podas means legs it is from a greek word mammals are hairy quadrupeds having a four legs they are 
homeotherms as i said homeotherms means warm blooded body temperature is constant will not be going to be changed for the surrounding environment they have two pairs of limbs adapted for walking running and climbing four limbs will also be there and the hind limbs is modified to adapted for walking running and climbing external ear pinna will be present for hearing different types of teeth present in their jaws like canine molar premolar like this your different types of teeth will be present in the animals that is nothing but the king uh, this one class mammalia and skin of a mammals are unique possessing hair the whole skin of these mammals are possessed with the hair four chambered heart as you have observed in the aves also four chambered heart and rbcs on maturity become enucleated before that the when the animals enters to maturity before that rbc is nucleated after entering it to the maturity it becomes a enucleated fertilization is internal and viviparous animals except echidna and platypus here viviparous means giving birth to young ones except echidna and platypus as i said echidna and platypus are the platypus are the egg laying mammal is an example for egg laying mammal they are going to ask it for hstr give an example for egg laying mammal that is echidna and platypus example tyropus commonly called as flying fox nothing but bat balenoptera blue whale commonly called as balenoptera blue whale equus caballus scientific name for the horse homo sapiens human being so this is about the class mammalia so these pisces reptiles amphibians aves and mammals comes under the class vertebrata so coming to the last uh, class uh, that is class invertebrata they are paraphyletic or nothing but group of animals that neither possess nor develops vertebral column these are the group of organisms which neither possess nor develops vertebral column hence they are called as a paraphyletic this group includes all the animals apart from the chordates subphyla vertebrates here these are the some classification of these invertebrates Por uh, porifera silenterata or cnidaria platyhelminthes or flatworms ask helminthes or nematoda annelida arthropoda mollusca and echinodermata along with the two two examples i have given here for porifera cycon and spongilla silenterata sea anemone and hydra platy helminthes or flatworms having a example liver fluke nothing but planaria tapeworm ask helminthes or nematoda example ascaris roundworm vacheria filarial worm annelida peritema example that is earthworm hirudinum sorry hirudinaria blood sucking leech arthropoda butterfly spider uh, living fossil nothing but king crab everything will comes under the arthropoda class arthropoda uh, sorry subclass arthropoda mollusca octopus commonly called devil fish dentalium tusk shell it is also comes under a mollusca so all the oyster will also be comes under this mollusca echinodermates nothing but starfish sea lily commonly called antidon echinus nothing but sea urchin so coming to each detailed information about the each subclasses first one porifera example cycon and spongilla here you can observe the spongilla and this one is a cycon we will go through the detailed information member of this phyla are commonly called as sponges they are generally marine and mostly asymmetrical as you have uh, discussed uh, we have discussed you no know, in the first uh, class only about the asymmetrical symmetry of the organizations everything we have discussed now here it will comes the all the symmetries organizations what kind of organization these having we are going to study here they are generally marine mostly asymmetrical animals digestion is intercellular intercellular nothing but inside the cell have cellular level of organization nothing but loosely arranged cells will be there water enters through a minute pore called ostea in the body wall into a central cavity called spongocele so 
the cavity will be present inside the body of the organism called porifera that is spongio spongio seals the body is supported by a skeletal made up of a spicules or spongin fibers here there will be absence of any uh, that is a backbone that's why the skeletal is made up of spicules or spongin fibers sexes are separate hermaphrodite we call it as a x and sperms are produced by the same individual nothing but both the sexes that is male and the female individual sperms and the x male and female gametes will be present in the same individual we call it as hermaphrodites so coming to the next category that is cilentareta here cilentareta commonly called as cnidaria example for this sea anemone and hydra this is the sea anemone and this is the hydra they are aquatic mostly marine sedentary means attached to one particular part or sessile or some will be free living like hydra radially symmetrical animals radially symmetrical when we cut in any vertical section you are going to get two equal halves cnidarians exhibit tissue levels of organization and are diploblastic tissue levels of organization means here the cells will group together and forms a particular tissue and performs a particular function diploblastic means having a outer ectoderm and the middle uh, inner endoderm some of cnidarians examples are corals have a skeleton composed of calcium carbonate digestion is extracellular and intracellular example for this is sea anemone and the hydra here platy helminth is commonly called as flat worms example for this tapeworm planaria they are dorsi ventrally flattened body hence are called as flat worms because in dorsal side and ventral side also it is very flat in nature that's why it is called as a flat worms flat worms are bilaterally symmetrical bilaterally symmetrical nothing but when you cut the uh, organism into two equal halves two identical equal halves you are going to get in one direction triploblastic means ectoderm endoderm and mesoderms three germ layers will be there a coelomids means absence of body cavity animals with organ levels of organization nothing but group of tissues group together and forms a particular organ here hooks spinules and suckers are present in the parasitic organism specialized cells called flame cells helps in the osmoregulation and excretion osmoregulation means entering of water excretion through flame cells sexes are not separate fertilization is internal and development is through many larval stage some members like planaria possess high regeneration capacity in which platy helminthes you are going to get high regeneration capacity means example is planaria nothing but liver fluke the power of regeneration is the capacity of regrowing the lost body parts this is about the subclass platy helminthes coming to the next concept is ask helminthes another name for that is nematoda example ascaris and vocheria the body of the ascaris is circular in cross section hence the name round worm circular in cross section if you cut the uh, part in a cross section uh, you are going to get a circular shape uh, that's why these uh, ascaris or nematodes are commonly called as uh, round worms the body of as here they may be free living aquatic and terrestrial or parasitic in plants and animals these are have present in the parasitic form some will be terrestrial some will be aquatic some are free living round worms have a organ system level of organization organ system level means a group of organs combines together and forms a organ system bilaterally symmetrical you have already learned triploblastic three layers germ layers pseudo coelomids means false uh, cavity body cavity will be present sexes are separate that's why it call it as a dioecious example males and females are distinct fertilization is internal and the development may be direct young ones resembles the adult or indirect method will be also be there here the female body of the organism is longer than when compared to male this one is ascaris and this one is the vocheria next coming to anelida anelida they are aquatic marine or a freshwater or terrestrial or free living sometimes it is parasitic for example leech will be there no this suck the blood that's why we call it as a saprophytic 
they exhibit organ system level of body organization and bilaterally symmetrical they are triploblastic metamerically segmented that is nothing but linear repetitions of a similar body parts along with the main axis you are going to get in the earthworm you can clearly observe the segments you are going to get here that's why metamerically segmented nephridia or in the nephridium helps in osmoregulation and excretion but in the platyhelminthes flame cells are osmoregulation and excretion helps in osmoregulation and excretion in alireda what happens nephridia that helps in regulation of osmoregulation and excretion a closed circulatory system is present that is heart pumps the blood neural system consists of paired ganglia connected by lateral nerves to a double ventral nerve cord near is an aquatic form is dioecious or unisexual dioecious means sexes are separate unisexual means either it may be male or it may be female but earthworms and leeches are monoecious or bisexual reproduction is sexual here is the picture you can observe the earthworm and leech next concept is arthropoda example butterfly spider here this is the largest phylum of animalia which includes insects spiders butterflies everything you are going to get here this is the largest phylum they have organ system level of organization they have bilaterally symmetrical triploblastic segmented and coelomate animals the body of arthropod is covered by chitinous exoskeleton which is periodically shed off for the purpose of growth and the process we call it as ecdysis or molting the body consists of head thorax and abdomen they have jointed appendages nothing but arthros means joint poda means appendages jointed appendages arthropoda the appendages are modified for the purpose of walking swimming and food handling and breathing respiration organs are gills book lungs or tracheal system they are mostly oviparous nothing but legs egg here this is the example for arthropoda spider and this one is the butterfly coming to the next class that is mollusca snail and octopus are the example for this and even the oysters pearl oysters will be example for this mollusca this is the second largest animal phyla these are terrestrial or aquatic marine or freshwater having an organ system level of organization soft and spongy layers of skins forms a mantle over the dorsal uh, visceral hump the space between the hump and the mantle cavity uh, in which feathers like a gills are present they have respiratory and excretory functions the anterior head region has a sensory tentacles the mouth contains a file like rasping organ for feeding called radula for feeding they are going to use it as a radula they are usually dioecious and oviparous with indirect development this is the snail and this one is the octopus coming to the last concept in this chapter living world is echinodermata the example is antidon and starfish all are marine with organ system level of organization these animals have an exo endoskeletons of calcareous ossicles and hence the name echinodermates nothing but spiny bodied the adult echinoderms are radially symmetrical but larvae are bilaterally symmetrical adults are radially symmetrical and the larvae will be bilaterally symmetrical triploblastic having three germ layers coelomate animals digestive system is complete with a mouth on the lower or a ventral side of and the anus on the upper or a dorsal side will be there sexes are separate reproduction is sexual fertilization is usually external and the development is indistinct with a free swimming larva here one special character about this starfish is there this is the mouth part of the starfish here what happens while feeding it attacks the organisms no when it attacks the organisms the stomach part that present inside the mouth it will pops out from the mouth and have feed the organisms and then it will go back to its position this is about the special characteristics and having a high capacity of regeneration here if accidentally the part of this arms will going to be cut no again it will reforms the structure so this is about the complete chapter
about the chapter living world this completes a whole chapter living world i hope you guys understood the concept very well if you are having any doubts you can comment it in a comment box please do subscribe like comment and share thank you for watching